hello everyone uh, i'm anupama the product marketer at frappe and um, yeah first of all welcome to our webinar uh, we're excited to have you all here with us today uh, when we'd be diving into the features and benefits of frappe books uh, so that you can you know make things simpler and save some money and focus on what matters most for you which is growing your business and um, just but before we get into the functions of frappe books a bit of a timeline for you guys. Uh, Frappe Books um, first came into picture in May 2020 when Rushab, the founder of Frappe, and Faris, uh, who is now the new products lead, uh, were working on it. And later in October 2021, Alan, who is here with us today, uh, picked it up as the product owner and launched it again during our ERP Next conference last year during September. And here we are today with around five K active users and uh, yep about Alan um, he's been with Frappe since June 2021 and have extensively worked on Frappe books to make um, it more more of a stable product for small businesses and freelancers who are working in the finance segment so yeah um, he'd be taking the lead in discussing the potential of Frappe books and how it can help you organize your finances easily but uh, before we go forward, a bit of pointers for the audience. Uh, please ensure that your name and surname is reflected on your Zoom account for easier reference and smoother interactions. And if you're using Zoom account, I mean Zoom desktop application, upgrade it to the latest version so that you could um, participate in the interactive polls that be coming up. So yeah, that's it. And uh, without any further ado, let's get started. Alan, over to you. You could uh, take the space and begin. Okay, I'll share my screen. Yeah. It's visible, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so Fabric Books is essentially a desktop accounting application that's meant for freelancers and small businesses. Uh, desktop means it doesn't run in your browser. And uh, other than that, it's also a local... Uh, application, which means that the data is stored on your database. Using Frappe Books is pretty easy. You just have to click on the download for free button on the website. And then uh, depending on your operating system, select one of the files. So uh, since I have a Mac, I'll select the zip file. And I already have it downloaded, so I won't waste time doing that. Once it has been downloaded, you can unzip it and then double click on the application and you'll have proper books open up. Okay. So now I'll be going over uh, before, before I use Frappe Books, I'll just show you all a demo instance that I have previously set up and kept. And I'll go over a few of the features uh, that's listed over here, uh, such as invoicing, journal entries, reports, uh, so on and so forth. So here, uh, this is the first screen that you see when you open up Frappe Books. Uh, if you already have an existing database file, you can click on existing file, if not new file. Since I have an existing database file, I'll click on existing file and then select the demo.db. And you can see that uh, Frappe Books opens up. Uh, this, is, this is the main dashboard of Frappe Books. You can see there are a bunch of charts here. Uh, the cash flow charts uh, show you the inflow and outflow from your cash and bank accounts. Uh, then there is uh, two bar charts for uh, sales invoice and purchase invoice, which show you the amount that has been paid and how much has not been paid. And if you hover over it, you can see the number of invoices that are paid and unpaid, same for purchase invoice. And then you have your profit and loss charts. And then finally, your uh, expense donut chart, which shows you the expense from each of the expense accounts, uh, from the top five expense accounts, sorry. So first thing we have in the feature list is invoicing. So you can make sales and purchase invoices using Frappe Books. The under sales, the first item is sales invoice and under purchases, the first item is purchase invoice. So uh, 
I have already created a few invoices here and kept and clicking on them opens up the sales, uh, the entry. And you can see that this invoice has been made for three items. And along with that, you can see that uh, since these items have tax, you can see the tax breakdown, the grand total, and a couple of other entries. Similarly for purchase invoice. This is a purchase invoice for a single item. Okay, on to the next feature. We have journal entries. Uh, journal entries are used to mark accounting entries that are not specifically a sale or a purchase. Uh, for that, we use purchase and sales invoices. So here we have a cash entry, which transfers cash from the bank to the cash account. So here the bank account is credited and cash account is debited. Next, we have uh, the payments feature. Uh, so when you make a purchase invoice or a sales invoice, uh, uh, it just marks the purchase or sale of an item. So here sales invoice just marks the sale of these particular items, but it doesn't say that uh, a payment has been made for this. So for that, we have payments. So here, uh, yeah, so we already have this purchase invoice and you can see that the status of this invoice is set to paid, uh, which means that I had already created a payment for this. I, if I click on this links button, you can see that a payment has been made here for the same amount that this invoice is there. And clicking on that will take me to the payment. Uh, making this payment uh, deducts or uh, increments the value in your uh, cash or bank accounts. So here it's from the cash account. Uh, now, if I click on the sales payment item here, you can see that uh, all the list of payments that have been made. Most of these payments are linked to an invoice. So that is through the references feature. Clicking on this arrow takes me back to the sales invoice to which the payment is linked. Okay, next we have uh, the feature for discounts. So for discounts, uh, you have to enable the feature by clicking on this checkbox. I had already enabled it previously. Now clicking on sales, I had created a sales invoice with discounts enabled. Uh, you can see here that a single item has been uh, sold uh, with the rate 2999. And on this, there was a discount applied for 20%. So uh, the discounted amount becomes 2399.20 and after which uh, tax is applied on it. So that's what the discount feature is. Uh, the reason why this is a separate feature is because when you're making marking discounts, uh, the discounts are locked in a separate account as opposed to just deducted from the final amount. Then we have reports. So Fractal Books has a couple of reports. Uh, first is the general, general ledger. Uh, the general ledger is a report that uh, tells you which account was uh, debited and credited per reference. So here we have uh, a sales invoice and you can see that the, these following accounts were debited and credited. Similarly here, we have a sales invoice in which the uh, discounts account was debited uh, because a discount is applied on this particular sales invoice. Next, we have the profit and loss. The profit and loss uh, report shows you the balances of your income and expense accounts, and then the difference between them, which is, if it's positive, then it's a profit. This is also reflected on the dashboard in a, under the profit and loss chart. So you can hover over them to see the specific profit and loss values. Next, we have the balance sheet, which shows you the balances of the assets and liabilities accounts. Uh, you can hide the group amounts uh, and just see specific accounts that have been deducted or implemented. And then finally, we have the trial balance report. The trial balance shows you the opening current balance and closing balance of all your accounts for a given uh, time period. Then finally, uh, secondly, we have the quick search feature. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite features because it uh, helps you quickly navigate to any place or any entry 
from Rutherbox. So you can enable it either by clicking on the search bar or pressing Control or Command K. Now say I want to uh, navigate to the dashboard, I just type TSH. I don't have to type the entire word and then click enter. And then it takes me to the dashboard. Say I want to find all the invoices created by John. So I just have to type John's name. And then I see that the entries created for John have showed up. First is the sales invoice, second is the payment, third is the customer entry for John himself. Uh, or I can go to like any page. Other than that, I can even uh, do specific actions such as creating uh, entries. So the following entries you can uh, create, such as sales invoice, purchase invoice. This uh, is more convenient than specifically navigating to any of these and then clicking on them. Okay. Next we have is the data import tool. Uh, if you are currently using some other accounting software, you can import data into Tape Books using the data import tool. Uh, for that, you have to click on setup and then click on import result. Uh, this is a very convenient tool. You can actually click on uh, the plus item and then you can add new entries. So it doubles as a bulk entry tool too. Uh, by the way, if any of these features uh, seem complicated, you can click on the help button. Clicking on the help button opens the documentation uh, for the current feature that you're using. So for example, now we were using the import wizard. You can see that the documentation page for import wizard has been opened and scrolling here will show you how to use it. Okay, the next feature we have is uh, multi-currency invoicing. I won't go over this, but essentially multi-currency invoicing allows you to uh, create invoices in a different uh, currency, uh, say for, uh, a party that is not in your uh, same in the same country as your uh, company so you can see that an expense rate uh, ex exchange rate uh, widget shows up when you set a customer with a different currency and then you can see that the amount here is dropped in dollars but uh, the final uh, base grant total is shown in rupees which is the instance currency next we have inventory management Inventory management is actually a pretty big feature. Uh, so it's enabled by clicking on enable inventory here. And once that is done, you can go to specific uh, items and then click on track item. And when you do that, you can create invoices for which uh, stock transfers can be made. So for example, here we have an invoice with a black t-shirt uh, and uh, being sold, like a single black t-shirt being sold. And since black t-shirt is a tracked item, I have also had to create a shipment for this, which marks the transfer of a black t-shirt to uh, the particular party. And uh, it enabling inventory enables a bunch of other features such as stock movement. So here you can see that I have uh, marked the material received of three black t-shirts. Uh, shipments, which are created after a sales invoice has been created to mark the transfer of goods, uh, purchase receipts, which are used to mark the receipt of uh, goods, uh, which is usually made after a purchase invoice. Then we have the stock ledger, which is like the general ledger, but for stocks, it shows you which uh, particular location has been affected by the transfer of some certain stock. So here you can see that uh, when the purchase receipt was made, the location stores was, uh, incremented by one. And then we have the stock balance report, which shows you the current balance in your, uh, in according to uh, the location. Finally, there are other uh, couple of features such as uh, the customizability of invoices in Prato books. So here you can print invoices uh, once you create them by clicking on this print button. And there are multiple uh, Prato books Pre build comes uh, from uh, comes with three invoices, uh, minimal business and basic. And you can click on save as PDF and then it will save as PDF and then you can export it. But besides that, you can also completely customize your invoice by clicking on uh, setup, print templates, and either clicking a new invoice or by opening one of the existing invoices and then duplicating them. 
and you can see that this is the template code for this particular uh, template. And editing this will change what the view here. Okay. Uh, before I move on, any questions? We do have a couple of questions in the Q and A section here. Uh, okay. Let me check. Seem to have lost my Zoom. Can we print barcode labels via barcode printer? Mm. Do you mean on the invoice? Uh, then, yeah, you can set the barcode as a image string, and then it can be printed. Is it customizable for using the country of UAE where there is bad tax or not GST? Uh, yeah, so a GST shows only in uh, only when the country is set to India. Otherwise, it just shows us tax ID. So you can set any tax, and then you can uh, make entries in your tax. For example, sorry. so this is the same demo instance. And if I click on setup and tax, you can see there's a list of taxes here, and you can add your custom new tax entry too. So it's not uh, specific to Windows. Post billing for fast selling. Yeah, post billing is going to be added. So we have a, a bunch of people working on adding post to graphic books. Should be done within a year, half a year to a year. Not audible. Is it audible? Yeah, you audible. Uh, probably some fault with that person's system. I've asked him to rejoin, drop in rejoin. So probably it, work, it would work. You're audible. Okay. So Mustafa is asking, how does inventory, how is inventory connected to purchase? If I make a purchase and want it to go to the inventory, what to do? So if you make a purchase, so here I'll give you an example. Uh, we add an item. Now I have made a purchase for an item. Now I can click on I can click on create and then purchase receipt and then uh, a new purchase receipt will be created and this will affect the inventory records. So how to close books for last financial year in Frapper box. Uh, for now, we suggest just using a separate database or uh, yeah, for now we just do that. Uh, like we have a couple of users using it and then for every financial year they use a new database because it's very easy to create a, a, a new database of traffic books. But yeah, later on we'll be adding some custom feature for that where you can uh, select only a specific period for your uh, database instance and then your trial balance should show the opening and closing account. Uh, explain sales return transaction. Uh, we don't have a sales return transaction, but you can cancel a sales invoice and then that should revert all the entries. So if I click on cancel here and if I go to reports and include cancel, then it will show me all the reverted entries too. Okay, there are a lot of questions. Anubhav, should I just continue answering the questions or should? Uh, it's up to you. If you would want to continue with it, you could take the questions later on. Um, or whatever you'd want to do. I'd suggest you continue with the 
flow and take up the questions at the end probably okay okay uh, i'll just go through a few more hmm. rapid fire style procedure to contribute in development and documentation uh you can ping me uh i'll show my the telegram uh, later on or you can join the frapa books telegram group can you show the reports part again okay do you mean this or uh, i suppose that answer your question you can group by and then i'll show you a reference or uh, just download an instance and then you yeah, click on the create demo button so i'll just show you guys that feature quickly so you go to change database and then you click on create demo and you enter the file name and then you click on save and you can see that it creates a new demo instance very quickly so i'll that's running i'll move on to the next question mm -hmm. can this be set up as cloud based so uh for now i mean you can but it's a lot of work if it if it was easy you probably would have done it by now uh so yeah this is the demo instance that has been newly created uh yeah so you guys should just download it and then try it or just click on the create demo button you don't have to create entries you can see that a few couple of hundreds of entries have been created 275 sales and questions have been created and you have like a populated instance you can click around Uh, there there are barcodes so on this instance the question is barcode for stock management like qr code for easy tracking okay. so you can set barcodes uh, you have to enable inventory for that and you have to click on enable barcodes can we import our own standard chart of our uh no you can't import like a standard chart of account there are a couple of chart of accounts that are uh, already present so you can use one of them or if the chart of account for your country is not there then you can contribute it on github and as for importing data from frappe cloud uh, i'm guessing you mean erp next you can do it but it, it doesn't map to frappe books directly so it's it's not going to be easy can we generate evoice and enable Mm, uh, currently no but we will probably add it in at some point can we use it along with erp next uh no you can't use it along with erp next so uh the pos model that is going to be added to frappe books that will also act as a offline pos for uh, erp next can we have customization like to add like to use invoices can we integrate custom frappe page uh yeah i'll that that's one of the big features i'll be working on this year so once it's done i'll ping you guys on the private books group can we take serial number stock items uh so serial number is going to be added soon uh there is an open uh feature request uh feature uh pull request sorry for serial numbers Frappe Books support Frappe stock and free materials as well. Yeah, it does. Uh, Frappe Books does support uh, stock and trees for material receipt, material issue, and manufacture. Uh, Sami Tarya has. I couldn't understand the verbal answer. What was your question again? Could you just type it once more? I lost it. Trouble. Let me see. Let me see. Is it customizable? Is there bulk invoicing? Uh, by bulk invoicing, if you mean creating of bulk invoices, uh, then yeah, you can use the import wizard to and set it to your sales invoice, and then click on plus, and then you can add as many rows as you want. yeah you can create uh, the question is document naming series possible uh yes you can create 
custom naming series. So so you can go to say So here you can change the number series, sorry, not naming series. And uh, click on create and then you can create new ones. Can you use Postgres as a database to save our data? Mm, no, currently it's just traffic. I mean, it's just SQL. So it's, it's for the most part, it's going to be a uh, local desktop application. So we, probably won't be using Postgres. If we do, then it will uh, it'll be on the server. So not locally, you won't be using it. So the question is, credit note is very important part of sales. Is that a part of GSD compliance? Uh, currently, Frappybooks doesn't have credit notes. Oh, okay, that was the follow-up question. Have you any future plan for credit debit notes? Uh, it is being added. So there, there are uh, open pull requests for credit and debit notes. Okay, I think I've covered all the questions. Okay, mm, I'll continue. Uh, yeah, so now what I had shown you guys was the demo instance. Now you can, uh, uh, so uh, I'll, I'll show you guys now from start how to create a new file. So you click on new file and you send enter the file name. The default is books.db. You can set it as what? Uh, save it. And now I'll create enter some data. Enter the email address. Set the country. Setting the country should sorry I'm not trying. Setting the country should set the currency, the chart of accounts and the fiscal year start and end date. So uh, one of the questions was regarding chart of accounts, the following accounts are available. So you already have the UAE chart of account, Canada, Guatemala, and a couple of other countries. If the country that you belong to uh, doesn't have a chart of account here, you can contribute it. Or if not, then you can just use the standard chart of accounts. Set a bank note. Select an image. And click on submit. After you click on submit, a new instance is created, and the first page that you see is the getting started page. So here you already have a couple of uh, things to get you started, such as reviewing accounts, setting opening balances, adding taxes, adding items, customers, creating sales invoice. So one of the first things you would want to do is creating a sales invoice. But before you create a sales invoice, you need an item which you're selling and you need uh, customers that you're selling to. So we'll do that, but we won't do it through the getting started uh, menu. We'll do it separately. So to create an item, we'll create a common item. So first we go to common, we go to items, we click on make an entry, we add an item. And here you can see uh, that there is a for written here. Uh, what this means is that you can use this item for purchases and sales both when it's set on both. Otherwise, it's either only for purchases or for sales. Then you have the product type, product or service, the unit, item description. Then you have the accounts that are uh, credit and debited when you make a sale. You can set tax. So additional to the above accounts, even tax accounts would be credit or debited. Finally, you can set an image. So let's say that the company that we have created, Flow's Clothing Company, is a reseller of black t-shirts. Uh, we need to first purchase the t-shirts, right? So we have created an item entry. Now we are going to create a supplier entry from whom we want to purchase the t-shirts. Uh, okay. I won't enter all these details, but you can enter them later when you're using it. 
keep us safe and a new party entry is created for a supplier from whom we can purchase t-shirts i click on purchase invoice click on make entry set the party set an item okay i have i forgotten to put the rate of the item here we go back to the item and we can set the rate and we can save it so when you make any change here it doesn't automatically say you have to click on the save button but it will show you the state as not saved uh if the data is not saved on restarting your instance uh, the change that you have made will go away so you click on save it will ask you whether you want to make the changes and then you click on yes and then we can go back to our sales invoice and then add the t-shirt again you can see that the rate has been updated here uh we want three t-shirts what about items that have variance like size of t-shirts so uh we don't have like a specific feature for variance but what you can do is uh you go to items and you can create a duplicate and then you can rename it as a variant so all the data is saved except for the name go back to the new entry uh, that you're creating you can see that setting the t-shirt has also updated the gst amounts here now we'll save this entry it's in the draft state now you can see that it says not submitted so when it grows it goes from uh, draft to not submitted means that your data has been saved but accounting entries have not been created for this purchase invoice so you click on submit it will ask you whether you want to mark this as submitted and then you click on yes and then now accounting entries have been created as indicated by this uh, toast at the bottom if you want to view them you can click on view and then click on accounting entries uh and you can see the values that have been credited and debited the accounts that have been credited credited and debited difficult words uh for the particular entry can you show gst setup so if you want to enable gst you just have to set a gst in number here and then after that uh, you'll find that like a new option is there for gst i won't get into that now but uh, there is a specific uh, page for it like under it's there in the documentation so it was created as unregistered so when you purchase the t-shirt why did it charge gst it charged gst because you were still paying i mean tax on it so uh okay can we modify entry sales purchase after they are submitted uh no because once you create these entries once you submit the sales invoice entries you can click on this link and you see that like four ledger entries have been created so if you edit them then these also would have to be updated and uh there are a lot of other things that are linked like the reports and all of that so uh you can't uh, change the entries once they have been submitted what you can do is you can cancel it and then you can duplicate the entry that will uh, allow you to create a new updated version of it okay now you can see that after we submitted the entry the status is set as unpaid so we have to make a payment of 1340 and we click on create and then payment and then that opens a new payment window uh this new payment window uh, will allow you to like quickly uh, create a payment for it otherwise you have to go to the purchase payments and then you have to enter all of these details so it's easier to just click here and then click on payment and then save so once you save it you can see that the entry has been paid and then you can click on the link button again and you can see that there is one payment that has been marked for it okay now that we have made a purchase uh, we'd want to sell our t-shirts so for that first we'll make a customer so so the customer's name is max
and create an address for Max. created an address for Max and now we click on save and new entry has been created for Max here. Now we can create a new sales invoice. We set the party. Setting the party automatically sets uh, the account and we select an item, which is t-shirt and we can change the rate since 399 was what we purchased at ours. Set it to 499. Click on save and then submit, same as before. And you can click on create, make a payment. And the sales has been paid. So now, you, if you go to the dashboard, you can see that the dashboard has been updated. Here currently, we are it's showing us a loss because we purchased three t-shirts, but you have sold only one. And you can see the cash outflow is shown in pink and the inflow is shown in uh, blue. Similarly, we, you can see that there's one paid invoice and uh, one paid purchase invoice and one paid sales invoice. And you can see the cost of buying those t-shirts here. The next thing is, uh, We'll make a couple more sales invoices, but uh, say if you want to make quick invoice, uh, quick invoices, and you don't want to mark payments for each and every invoice, you would want to set up auto payments. Uh, this is a feature that was recently added, less than a week ago. So you just go to uh, settings, click on defaults, and then you set an account over here. Click on save, and now uh, we do the same thing. Set max, set debtors, t shirts, one t shirt, and set the rate as 499. And you can see that a new tab has shown here. Clicking on that will show you that we have this checkbox. Setting it will make a payment on uh, submit. So we have done that and we click on save. And when we click on submit, you can see that it additionally informs you that like a payment of made uh, and the accounts from which to which it will be made. Then click on save and on sub and sorry. And then you can see that the entry has been made. Okay. Now that you have made a sales invoice, you would want to print the invoice. So you can see the print button is showing here. Click on print and you can select one of these three, but say you don't want to use one of these three invoices. Uh, you want to, you already have a template file that has been created and kept. You can go to the print templates page, click on plus, you can click on select template file. I already have a template file that has been created and kept called the uh, order. And you can see here, uh, a new template has been created. I'll click on save and uh, you can see that you can, th there are a bunch of other customizations that you can make here uh, from the print settings. So you can see that the color is set to black. If I change it to say purple and then paper up, set up print template modern. You can see that the colors have changed to purple. Uh, additionally, if you want to make any other changes, you can just, type it here. So say instead of invoice, I wanted to say tax invoice. I type tax and then press control return. And then you can see it updates. Similarly, I can change, say the text, I'm going to change it to blue. You can see the from has changed to blue now. save the changes that we have made. Now we go back to the invoice that we created for Max. 
you click on the print button and you click on save as PDF. It'll ask you where you want to save the file. You can click on enter. It'll show you that the PDF has been saved. Then you can click on open folder and then you can see that the created uh, PDF has been exported properly. Okay, I'll show you guys uh, one more thing, which is the import wizard, which I just briefly touched on in the previous section. But uh, now say we want to import a couple of items. I already have data saved here and kept in a sheet. So all I need to do is export it as CSV. data has been saved and I just need to select the file. On selecting the file, you can see that the table has been populated. After doing this, if you want, you can even change individual values such as for or type or the unit or rate or the name, or you can add additional rows. And once you have done all of that, and once you have verified your data, you can click on import data and import has completed. You click on show me, it will take you to the page. Okay. So a couple of final things I want to show you guys is I've already shown you the help feature, which is uh, if you're any of the page, any page and you click on help, it will take you to the relevant documentation page. The next thing is uh, shortcuts. So Frappe Books has a couple of shortcuts that you can use for quicker entry. More and more shortcuts will be added later, but uh, for now, the following shortcuts are there. By clicking on shortcuts, you can view them. Uh, next is the report issues. So if you find any issues there, you can click report issues and it automatically fills out a template for you on GitHub. And you can complete, you can fill this out and then submit it. And then I can take a look and then fix whatever issue you have. Uh, then we have change DB. You already know what change DB does, but I just want to show you guys the final thing, which is that uh, the portability of the database, since the database is already on your system, uh, there are all these DB files. You can use any other software to open the DB files. So here, for instance, I'm using the software known as Beekeeper Studio, and you can look at the raw values inside the database. So here, if I double click on accounting ledger entry, you can see the following entries have been made. And if you want, you can directly delete files too. By clicking on the X and then and the file is found. And then find that it's not there. Okay. I'll answer some of the questions that are there. Can we modify the GST tax rates? tax rates and update with black tax codes and rates. Uh, yeah, you can do that. You can click on set up taxes and then you can change the uh, rate or the tax account or you can add new accounts and new rates. Next question. Sorry, but when we purchase from unregistered party, irrespective of whether we are GST registered or not, we should not charge GST in first place. Hmm. Suppose that's a bug then. We have to lock out. Is there option on purchase to charge the purchase charges in valuation of stocks? Uh, no, there is no specific option for this. You have plans to make an app, iOS or Android. So we don't plan to make an iOS or Android app, but uh, if it runs in the browser, then we'll create mobile web views for it and then you can use it as a uh, web app. Can you handle term of payments? Yeah, yes, you can uh, set, uh, 
you can set an attachment it can set specific terms but attachments can be added uh, other than that in defaults you can set the default terms for sales and purchase invoices so you don't have to type them out as one another can we record advance payments and sales orders uh yes you can record advance uh I'm, not specifically but you can uh, set the date to official date you can record the date here uh, you can record the payment here and uh, you can make the sale later on so it's, there's no specific uh, sequence or that is the user and edit logs uh currently there are no user and edit logs because it's meant to be used by a single user but uh we are planning on adding multi user support so once that is done there will be user and edit logs do we have selling rate and purchase rate separately uh so currently there is only one rate but uh, there is uh, a feature for uh, price lists that are being developed so once that's done you can set separate purchase and sell rates how to manage standard buying and standard selling price uh, that will be handled by handled by price list once it's added how are multi currency transactions handled like we make a sale in usd while currency in ad so what you can do for that is uh, when you create a new party uh, i'll turn that when you are creating a new party you can set the currency here as something else and uh, when you change the currency uh, it automatically creates a multi currency invoice so if i go to docs.fratabooks uh, you can see there is an entry for multi currency invoice and uh, yeah that should appear what is the cost for using the software uh currently there is no cost for using it it's free of cost so if if you are wondering how we are going to make money off of this we haven't entirely thought of it but uh, maybe later on through paid backups or through multi user support but for uh, now it's completely free is there setup for is there setup for post data checks like if future data checks and how it will be handled uh it probably can be but it it probably your post data checks can probably be handled through journal entries but uh i'm not sure exactly how because i'm not familiar with this use case or workflow so if you can explain it better i'd be able to tell you how practical can handle it is there an option for manufacturing like stock journal so there is an option for uh, you can create a manufacturing entry Now if I go to change DB to the demo database, and if I go to inventory, create a new stock movement, I can set stock movement type as manufacturer, and uh, you can check in the documentation what that means. If you want help, you can see that there are four movement types and what uh, manufacturing uh, movement in the context of Rathos what it means. what technology stack use so currently it's using uh, electron and uh, inside electron we are running uh, vue js there are no apis for it but when we do add multi user support uh, we will be bringing in a server so at that point we will have support for apis can we have reports in any other currency apart from the base currency uh, as of now you can uh, as of now it shows only in uh, the base currency possible to rename party to customer mm, i'm not sure what you exactly mean here so party is just the general term for both customer and supplier uh, both of them are recorded in the same database so here we have suppliers and under sales we have customers and the common term for them is party so when whenever you create uh, when you set the role as supplier or customer then they will show under one of those two uh, list but if you set it as both then it just shows under party 
maybe at a later time it will be just set as a party like a common so so as to avoid confusion also about checks for dishonor do we need to cancel the entries or is there a reversal of this at dishonor state so uh, when you cancel an entry it already it creates uh, reverse entries those reverse entries are created uh, when you uh, the dates for those reverse entries are created for uh, when they are cancelled other than that if you need some specific feature you can let us know in the uh, frappe books telegram group and then we, we can add it in can set up a bomb or bundle of items uh so bomb comes under manufacturing and we want to keep the scope of frappe books uh, as narrow as possible for uh, accounting for small businesses and freelancers so we mostly won't be adding manufacturing specific features for that you can uh, use the rpnx i suppose is there option to use common party like we can buy from customer to maintain same ledger same for supplier yeah if you use common party then you can uh, uh, essentially what you said that's how it takes place it just uses the same party for uh, buying and selling but uh, the only problem with that is that the default account then you have to set when you're making a sale or purchase other than that it is uh, the same will this support mario db ah uh, no i maybe the server version will support but the local version won't be supporting mario db Yeah, I think I've answered all the questions. Okay. okay, back to the presentation, and this is the final slide. So, thank you guys for coming. Uh, you can follow the development of Frappe Books on the Frappe Books Twitter page, or on my Twitter page where I uh, post specific development things. Uh, on the Twitter page for Frappe Books, I uh, post about uh, release updates, and then you can follow. it also on the telegram group uh, where uh, we have discussions sometimes and uh, also like uh, new features and all are decided on the basis of what the uh, users say on the telegram group other than that you can use uh, this link to download frappe books frappe books are from such on board okay that's it for us okay um yeah uh, thanks alan for all the features walk through and a brief demo on how things work on frappe books our audience definitely must have gotten some good insights on our offline accounting software and also like we have gotten 75% yes votes for the accounting basics block series so we could probably uh, look into it and also a 64% yes vote for multi user subscription so yeah that's that's oh, a good sign uh, also uh, the audience there'd be a survey that will flash once you drop the call so please take that up it would be really helpful for us in developing the product further so yeah um so now we will just conclude the webinar uh, thanks for attending everyone and thanks alan again yep thank you guys